footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our Mountain West Conference Game of the Week preview between the UNLV Rebels and the San Jose State Spartans. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Rebels. Getting off the bus, you know the running Rebels will stay true to the moniker with sensational senior tailback Tim Cornette. But what has made this UNLV team much different this season is the progression of the passing game with senior quarterback Caleb Herring. He has done a sound job of making plays through the air when he's called upon. And most importantly, he's protecting the football and has only thrown one interception this season. Defensively, the Rebels have struggled versus teams that can line up and run downhill. So it'll be vital this week versus San Jose State that they don't allow the Spartans that freedom because all effort and focus should be on slowing down David Fells in that potent passing game of San Jose. Now let's move over to San Jose State in this ball game and they're on a three game winning streak and it's because they finally found a ground game with Gerard Lawson and also Jason Simpson to take some of the pressure of quarterback David Fells in that passing game. Balance is tough to defend and it also helps out that offensive line that has had some leakage and pass protection earlier in the season. Now the Spartans have gotten better defensively over the last three weeks. However, there's concerns that are still there in their ability to slow down the run. Now last week versus Wyoming, they got eight up on the ground, giving up over 330 yards running. Now UNLV is 70% run, more power base as opposed to the Cowboys spread attack. So needless to say, they're gonna have to have a better effort up front in order to be successful. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For UNLV, you wanna shrink this ball game, make it a possession type of a game. You wanna maximize your possession and limit the possessions of San Jose State. And you wanna stay active at the line of scrimmage as talented as David Fells is. He's a guy that tends to flatline his passes so you can get tip passes which could result into incompletions or better yet, interceptions. And you have to be able to get off the field defensively. You can't allow the Spartans to go on long sustained drives. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself on the losing end of the scoreboard. Now for San Jose State, the biggest battle defensively that you want to keep an eye on is between their cornerback, Benet Ben Wickery, who's an outstanding prospect, going against Devontae Davis, the talented wideout for UNLV. That's a battle Ben Wickery is going to have to win throughout the course of this ball game, and he can't allow quarterback Caleb Herring to get outside and extend plays because he's an outstanding passer on the run and is very accurate. Keep him contained, tackle to tackle, and you can have a chance. And on offense, I would work from the bunch formation a little bit more so than trying to spread the field. That way you can generate those natural rubs and picks and hopes to get a big play in the passing game very early. Now here are some 2014 draft prospects you want to keep an eye on in this ball game. For the Rebels, you look at running back Tim Cornette, one of the more underrated running backs in the country. And junior wide receiver Devontae Davis is more of a 2015 draft prospect, but this guy should have a big time game versus San Jose State. And Tyler Gaston on the defensive side for the Rebels is one of their best playmakers defensively, does a great job on the interior. And for San Jose State, we've talked about these guys before. David Fells, one of the best passers in the country, and cornerback Benet Ben Wickery. Glad he's recovered from that scary injury he suffered a couple of weeks ago versus Utah State, but he's one of the better cornerbacks in the country. Vince Buhagir, outstanding linebacker, can play inside or outside, and a talented tackle, and Nicholas Casper at 6'4", 285 pounds. The X Factor in this game for the Rebels will be their quarterback, Caleb Herring, who has played outstanding so far this season. And if he can continue to protect the football and take those timely shots downfield, the Rebels can have a lot of success on offense. And the X Factor for the Spartans will be that run defense. Like I mentioned before, they got gashed by the Wyoming Cowboys. This is a different animal in UNLV, more of a power scheme. So they're going to have to be ready to go to stop the run on first down, second down, and maybe even third downs. Randall Cunningham was a two-time All-American player at UNLV, but as a punter, that shows you how great of an athlete he was. And this is a guy that finished his career with 59 passing touchdowns and almost 8,000 yards throwing the football and led UNLV to its only double-digit winning season going 11-2 in 1984, leading these guys to a California Bowl victory. Steve DeBerg is another outstanding quarterback coming out of this great San Jose State program. And he's a guy that, as a senior, threw for over 2,100 yards and 19 touchdowns and also led San Jose State to the Pacific Coast Athletic Conference Championship.
like UNLV to win this ball game. I look at what they can do on the ground. They can control the TOP. They're going to out possession the San Jose State Spartans. So I like the Rebels to go on the road and knock off San Jose and becoming bowl eligible for the first time in 13 seasons.